What do you mean by black black ether? I, 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 I'm, I've heard you say that many times and I've been trying to absorb what you mean by that. And, and, and... Okay. Let's say that you have a perception of something. It's a mental construct. Could be internal, could be external, doesn't matter. What makes that mental construct what it appears to be is itself and the exclusion of everything that it's not, mm -hmm. right? So if the mental construct, if the thing is itself and is not anything other than itself, is not anything else, then it's kind of like a bubble. It has a barrier, it has a skin. Just like any perspective that we have is has a limitation by, by virtue of yeah. the fact that it's a perspective. Yeah, the, the line of limitation would be the skin or the shell. In mm -hmm. Kabbalah, that's called a klipa, yeah. right? So if conceptuality in a conceptualized universe is made entirely of these assumptions of mental constructs, which are shells or skins around designations, conceptual designations, then you could look at two parts of the skin. There's a part that faces in, into itself, right? If there's a bubble, the skin of the bubble can face into what the bubble contains. But on the other side of the skin, it faces out into infinite open expanse, right? So these two aspects of the skin that face in and face mm -hmm. out, which are called the front and the back, or mm -hmm. the inner and outer aspect of that skin. Like the, is that the burning bush metaphor again? The front and the back of, of, of God or, or whatever? Um, yeah, because um, Moses says to God, presumably at the burning bush, who should I uh, say sent this? And he says, asher, ehya, I am that I am. The, the punchline of the joke is, is no man can see my face and live. No man yeah. can see the front, meaning the part that faces out into infinity. The you totality. Only, or, or the... Yeah, you could only see from the point of containment in. You yeah. can't see from the point of containment out, uh -huh. right? Because a mind can't comprehend that. It takes something beyond the psyche to approach that. The psyche only knows designations, even, even in its best case scenario. So black ether is this magical point where the front and the back of the skin of a mental construct touch each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And at that touch point, the ground is directly asserted and the shell or the skin can be unmade. Because at that touch point, at the point of black ether, there is no one point of black ether. The, the touch point is where every touch point of every mental construct in infinite interpenetrating, overlapping, transparent, selectively, mutually non-obstructing relationships and clusters, they all share one touch point because it can't be fragmented or isolated. There is no such thing in terms of the black ether as a difference between the one and the many. That's the point where the one and the many come apart and dissolve into the ground. So if you were to realize one point of black ether in one particular shell where inner and outer touch, you realize the point of black ether inherently in everything. Mm. And there's a great deal more about this um, Kabbalistically that has to do with the concealing of divine sparks within the appearance field. Because the job of realizing the black ether, which is to unmake the shells that posit reification and division, right? If you were to successfully realize the black ether at all, you would then have the means to unmake not only one shell or group of shells or network of shells, but the very impulse of shell construction which would mean that what was concealed in those shells, which are sparks of the divine, would be spontaneously liberated. And the spontaneous liberation of divine sparks 
is very much the same as the realization of divine ether, because just as the divine ether can't be reduced to a one or a many, you can't fragment sparks of the divine either. How can there be sparks, plural, of the divine if there's no reification and division in the divine? It's, it's only our, our habit field that thinks that there are instances of the divine. In reality, there's only the wholeness. So when you realize the black ether as the unmaking of the shell structures of mental constructs and designations, you spontaneously liberate sparks and realize luminosity in its innate or essential sense. Mm -hmm. And that is called gnosis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So spontaneous realization which doesn't mean stable realization. And would that make it so that you don't know the difference between dreaming and sleeping? Because is that the moment between dreaming and sleeping? Is that the black ether? Oh, or no. I, I think that, that erasing the difference between dreaming and sleeping happens much earlier in the process. I don't even think it's that big a deal. I think uh, erasing or, or selectively to some degree erasing that, that hypnagogic barrier is a way more common thing than realizing black ether. I think it's something that if anybody was really interested in it, all they would have to do is just examine their own phenomena. And depending on the degree to which they were interested, they would realize that things as they appear to be are already inherently dreamlike. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I was more thinking about the boundary between sleeping and waking, like this boundary. Well, that's um, just the thing. There is no boundary between between yeah. those two states. The just perceived like boundary. The, the whole concept of the shells and the divisions between things is an illusion from the outset. So when you realize the black ether, you're not actually breaking through something. It was never there to begin with. <laughs> So what you're realizing is just that, that, that the shells that constitute ordin so-called ordinary assumptions about reality, they were never real to begin with. They were an assertion, an assertion of your perceptual habits from the outset. They were always a projection of your base tendencies and the specific limitations of your habits and the general tendencies of the realm's habits. And they were never anything other than that. And there's no thing about them, which is essentially real whatsoever. So what's the difference between that and like death or so, something? Um, I, I'm jumping around. I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm kind of well, the, the realization of the black ether is presumed on a certain assumption that the beginnings and ends of phenomena are mental designations that have no reality either. So the ultimate beginning and end of phenomena is the birth and death of phenomena. And what I'm saying is that that distinction is a, an assumption, a, a perceptual assumption that is conceptual. You are conceptualizing that, that something is born and something will die. That is predicated on the fact that you think that there's something there. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you in the realization of the black ether that that is not the case. There is no thing to be born and no thing to die. So the conceptuality that you're breaking through is a birthing, deathing set of conceptual assumptions that have no validity. This is generally what is termed the apophatic approach. I was just coming to that word. Uh, and you said, mentioned, you said post-apophatic, right? Uh, yeah, well- um, What did I, you mean by that? Well, when we deal with um, pure vision, what we call pure vision, which is a, a view of phenomena as inherently replete with divinity, right? That becomes possible after the conventional habit assumptions that ordinary people carry around is exhausted or resolved, you could say. 
And the means by which that resolution or exhaustion of habit tendencies happens is immersion in, in what we call the apophatic bath, essentially mm-hmm. immersion is in the nothingness state. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But of course, immersion in the nothingness state doesn't mean that the world goes away. So the spontaneous expression- Because it's the no thingness state, it's not, it's not a mere void. Yes, but the world doesn't go away. So there is the spontaneous assertion of phenomena that you that still has to be contended with. So depending mm-hmm. on the degree to which the apophatic immersion is, is resolved, there is a post-apophatic reassessment of the meaning of things. Mm-hmm. So for example, this glass to what we could call the ordinary habit field seems to be a thing, right? It seems to be itself and nothing else. Here it is. It has substance. It occupies a place dimensionally and can even be seen in a continuum of motion, which we call the dimension of time. We could conceptualize about it and come to a conclusion that it either is or is not, right? Those five categories, substance, dimension, time, concept, and beingness are the markers of what we call ordinary reification. That's how phenomena is reified. It's reified in that way. Something exists somewhere at some time. It's conceptualized and the determination is made whether it is or is not. The black ether is the coming apart of all of those assumptions, but yet the phenomena persists. On the other side of the the dissolution of those assumptions, we have those very same qualities asserting themselves with new meaning. Substance becomes substancelessness. Dimension becomes non-dimensionality right? Temporality becomes atemporality. Conceptuality becomes non-conceptuality. And the very root, which is being or not being, becomes something utterly incomprehensible, which that's the root of the other four. Phenomena can still be presented, but its meaning is now magical on the visionary level. And this is what we call pure view or pure vision. It's the assertion of the ground through phenomena and not in spite of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is the main alchemical transmutation that takes place where ordinary view is displaced by, or we could say consumed by the nosemic or Gnostic vision, which is the post-apophatic assertion of divinity through infinite variation, but there is no entity or monad being asserted. It is completely open, which is why I say that my view is a non-monistic view, because the very thing that makes it work is that apophatic immersion into nothingness. That completely belies the uh, assumption that all things are one as a monad. You couldn't have a, an apophatic or a post-apophatic transmutation if you held the kind of monist view that I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So when people say, um, God gave the Torah on Mount Sinai, right? The very thing that reifies the, the absolute, uh, which most people assume when they call it God, This is the very root of something that we are reassessing because when the voice answered Moses at the burning bush, he said, who should I say sent me? And he said, I am, or I will be that which I will be. There's a series of places you could go with that. And one of those places is, oh, you mean God is a giant ego. That includes everything else. Uh, I am. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. And if okay. that's the case, you there's your monad. Uh-huh. 
and we're just calling it God now, but it's really just like what I'm doing with my own mind. Mm -hmm. So actually the other side of God or whatever, the other side of the burning bush or is, is without dimension or without can't be reified or described. No, or explained no. Or... What, what I'm saying is that we're doing away with the concept of sides. There's no sides anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because if you have two sides, you're doing it again. You're doing it again. Yeah. Yeah. But how could you not do it again in, in, in when you're using language to describe these things? Well, Maybe. that's why you got to dump the language. That's why you got to dump the language. Okay. Yeah, th yeah. That's why you got to mm -hmm. dump the language and dump the philosophy and dump every conceptually designating coordinate point that is used to reify phenomena wholesale. Get rid of it. Throw it in the fire. The beast must be consumed. But if the beast is everything, the beast must consume itself. Mm. Yeah. So if there's sides, you're doing it again. And if you're doing it again, you're not going to get out of that predicament until the, the pith of the, the, the wisdom of the arrangement is made evident.